This is the Big Red Rage, presented by Santan Ford and Gilbert. Murray's going to score, touchdown! Slammed to the ground by Buda Baker. Like a torpedo, he came flying into the backfield. <laughs> the Rage is brought to you by Santan Ford and Gilbert. Right on the price, right on the corner of the Santan 202 Freeway in Val Vista. Seeky, your ticket to great seats. And by Arizona Cardinals Podcast. Visit azcardinals.com slash podcast. The Red Sea is rising up. Temperature rising, vision blurring, rage taking over. Here's Paul Calvisi. I'm ready. I'm 100% ready. I'm telling you I'm ready. And Ron Wolfley. It doesn't get any better than that. Unleash the fury. All right, Red Sea, let's go. Let's come off the ball. Come on now. Let's hear it. And, of course, it's raining out there. I mean, you know, it's got to be a preview of game day of Sunday in Pittsburgh. Some of us are sideline strong around here, and we can handle it. <laughs> oh, no. Some of us like to sit in the climate-controlled broadcast booth and then get another cup of coffee and yet another pastry. We'll figure that out as we go along here. Paul Calvisi and Ron Wolfley. I mean, it's been a day. If J.J. Watt can break national news <laughs> on the Arizona Cardinals, then, of course, we can broadcast the Big Red Rage presented by Santan Ford and Gilbert. <laughs> yeah. And with no further ado, let us introduce our very special guest tonight, just Cardinals starting cornerback and leading tackler in the Rams game, Keytrell Clark, oh, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank there we you, go. Thank you. In fact, Wolf, since I can tell you don't have anything yet to say, uh, no. with, no, <laughs> with no further ado, Keytrell, I'm not sure you're aware of this. We started the, this year the Angry Bird Award, okay? okay. Where for those of us uh, who are in the audience listening only, it's an Angry Bird stuffed animal that I put into this mini <laughs> helmet right here, and I give this out every week, Wolf. This goes to the, either the most hellacious play or player yeah. in every game. And the week 13, week 12 winner, Keytrell Clark. Okay, there right here, right the there. Angry Bird Trail Award. Clark. Okay, Paulie, so you're Thank the one you. picking that award? Is that what you're saying? I created it. I pick it. Um, <laughs> okay. There's, there's just one one thing I should point out. I, I can't actually give this to you, Keytrell, because I don't quite have the budget yet, and <laughs> I only have one. <laughs> why, so why, you do a, that? why you do it, that to me, man? It's honorary. Yeah. <laughs> it's honorary. We'll put it up here. As a okay? matter of fact, uh, you had me excited for a second. <laughs> Paul, at least hand it to him. Okay, I mean, for, you know, just here let you him go. hold here the you thing go. for there a minute, okay? Thank you, thank That's you. Right. Thank I'll, you. I'll here we go, ladies I'll, and gentlemen. I'll invoice another one to Jim Almohandro. <laughs> there okay. we go. Keytro, how you doing? Hey, man, I am well. I am well. Thank you guys for having me here today. This is a, a great opportunity, man, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Keytro, you know, honestly, um, it's great to see you. We no are big fans of your game and big fans of you as a person as well. How right. is your rookie season going? I mean, let's go big <laughs> picture right now. Yeah. When we start talking about it, how do you feel this year has yeah. gone? Man, I feel like it's been a lot going on this 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 rookie season for me. Uh, even starting way back until, you know, missing rookie mini camp because I had to go graduate. Um, it's been a whole uphill battle, man. But uh, I think I've been been uh, doing a great job with it. Uh, I have a great support system, um, and I think through the highs and the lows, man, I, I feel like I'm being pretty resilient through it all. So. Man, I'm grateful. <laughs> You're learning something about yourself a yeah. little bit as well, right? Absolutely. It's been highs. It's been lows. I had to take some time and, and look myself in the mirror over some things, uh, maybe not playing as best as I thought I, I'd be able to, be, to play at, at that moment and, uh, you know, getting benched and that whole situation. And, man, it was just an uphill battle, like I said. And I'm continuing to keep on, you know, fighting and swinging every single day. Man. So we want to get into that at some point in yeah, time, yeah. a little bit later maybe in the show. But right now, just overall, man, yeah. Keytrell, you're in the National Football League, man. man. I mean, <laughs> when did you start dreaming about playing in the NFL? When yeah. did you start really thinking, man, I could do this? Man, since I was a little kid, I've been playing football since I was five. Wow. Since I was playing flag football, I would get the football and run into the opposite end zone. Like, I was. <laughs> <laughs> you were Jim Marshall. <laughs> yes, I was literally been playing this game since I was a little boy, man. And, you know, I've never missed a season since I was five years old. So that says a lot as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So I just, you know, I had I had a goal set. Um, a lot of people say, man, you, you got to have a plan B. 
Um, I really didn't focus much on the plan B. I just focused on plan A, and that was making it to the NFL, and, and I'm here now. And every day, even in the L.A. game last week, I was just lining up, and I'm like, man, like, I'm really in the NFL right now, and it's 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 a it's a surreal feeling. It is, man. <laughs> I know that rookie feeling. I know yeah. that. <laughs> so the fact you didn't want to miss graduation yeah. from Louisville, yeah. what does that say? Because we didn't even know you yet, and that was our first impression. <laughs> and we're like, that's a heck of a first impression <laughs> that graduation was meaningful enough to you that you're like, you asked coach for permission to right. attend, right? Right. So before I even got drafted, um, me and JG had a conversation, and I was letting them know, like, man – like rookie minicamp is around the time of graduation. Like coach, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it to rookie minicamp. And he was like, Man, it's okay. Like, dude, go graduate. Like, do what you gotta do. We're gonna be here. Just come ready to work. And right at, right during that during that time period when he told me that, I knew that this was the place that I needed to be because a lot of clubs, they probably won't respect that as much, you know. So um, I appreciated that for them and, you know, just keeping it real with me and letting me do that. So, Keytrell, what was that like, graduating? Like, what? I mean, did Man. you walk? Did you do the whole thing? Yeah, so I am, I'm in a fraternity as well. Uh, so me and uh, two, of, two of my other fraternity brothers, we graduated on the same day. And uh, so we have a little frat step that we do. And as I was walking through the <laughs> stage, walking over the stage, you know, I just did my fraternity step. And it was an amazing feeling, man. I'd say the only feeling that I can compare to it is uh, probably having having my, my baby, um, my firstborn, uh, and and getting drafted. It's, it's like it's a feeling that you can't really explain, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's, that is so worthy of an applause right there. I, I don't know what that frat step looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll show you all one day on a celebration. I, I would look forward to that. But, <laughs> but we do know what your intro looks like based on how you were introduced. <laughs> Did you see that, Wolf? You're up in the booth. Did you see him pull off Paul. that gymnastics move? What, what do you call <laughs> that, by the way? <laughs> Man, that's just a backflip, man. Easy, easy backflip. I've been doing that since I was little. Okay, so I, you came out and you did a backflip. Okay, because I, I have to tell you, I missed it. I saw pictures of it, yeah. but I missed it right here. How, how long have you been able to do that? Probably since I was like 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> So that's not See, this is like, no way, man. I feel like a caveman throwing rocks at the moon I when mean, I if, think of how you would even start doing that. If I'm the GM or the coach, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Do you consider that risky to do that? It is, but like I was telling my dad uh, literally today, <laughs> I literally told him, I said, man, like doing a backflip is kind of like second nature. Like it's just something that I can, I can really do like easily. So uh, uh, Nick Rallis, he told me one day, he was like, man, I just think about it if you don't land it. I said, coach, I'm going to land it, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, it reminds me of Marco Wilson last year in the pick six against Andy yeah. Dalton yeah. where yeah. he vaulted. You yeah. know, he did all that parkour Iconic. stuff when he was a kid. It kind of reminded yeah. me. No, nah, that was that was an iconic uh, photo for him. Yeah, yeah sure. it was. So yeah, but that was a front, right? Paul, yeah, he did that a was front a front. Yeah, he just vaulted right? in and then yeah. yeah just, okay, so he said he just launched himself and in midair he figured it out. That's so what Marco Keytrell, said. Control, can you do a front that like flip Marco. as well? I mean, you see, feel like see, you can do doing it? a front flip is not second nature, so I probably won't try that one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. Do you do anything? Do you, have you ever done parkour at all? No, nah, not really. I'm well. If if you consider like jumping off of slides and playgrounds and hitting backflips, uh, yeah, I guess I did some parkour growing up. That's, that's <laughs> amazing, man. Uh, kids, uh, don't try that at home. Please okay? don't. Uh, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Thank you. In fact, let's go into the locker room. All right. So look, it was a tough outcome against the Rams, yeah. and one of the team captains, Dennis Gardeck, and uh, you know what? He had something really meaningful to say after the game. Here's Gardeck. You know, our sports psychologist hit us in the, the off season and said there's there's three enemies in any given battle. It's first yourself, second the guys around you, and third the actual opponent. And we fought all three of those today. Interesting. Mm. Now the guy sitting next to you reminds us of a Dennis Gardeck, all right? So Wolf played ten years and went to four Pro Bowls as a special teams assassin. Gardeck sort of has that similar mindset the way he plays and and I saw him work on the sideline in the second half. You know, yeah. some of the veterans had a few things to say, didn't they? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And guys like Gardeck, um, you know, he's a, he's emotional about the game, um, as he should be. Anybody that cares about this game should be emotional about it, especially when we're not getting, you know, the outcome that we work so hard for every single day. Uh, so, man, uh, 
hats off to Gardak for being a great captain on this team um, and, and, and pushing guys, uh, vets, younger guys as well to, you know, get get this leaf turned over. You know what's so interesting about that, Polly, as well, just listening to that last cut that you played, three enemies. Um, I had an old coach who used to say, you know what your three enemies are? Me, myself, and I. <laughs> yeah. That's what he used to say <laughs> right there. And his point, obviously, was yeah. everything begins and ends with you and how you apply yourself. Yeah. Everything. And, I, you know, that was something that I adopted early on in my professional career. It wasn't in college that I learned that, me, myself, and I. It was more about, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You've been given X amount of ability, Ron. Go out and you, yourself, and I go out and do everything you can. Fulfill all of the potential that you have and apply it. That, that was something that he used to say to me all the time, and, and I got that. Yeah. I, I understand there are a lot of extenuating circumstances. Are you kidding me? There's a, there's a human being who's very, very talented, who's trying to keep you from doing your job, exactly. Keytrell, right? Exactly. So, I mean, yeah, of course you have to worry about who your opponent is and what scheme you're running and what your assignment is. You have to worry about all of this. Yeah. But I thought, man, that was really cool, you know, yeah. that you would take responsibility just for yourself. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you're learning? Exactly. Every single day. Uh, every single day that I wake up, I have to – put my right foot for it for myself and for my family as well. Um, but as far as Gardak was talking, as far as Dr. So we, his name is Dr. J. So Dr. J, he comes <laughs> in and, you know, he le he uh, leaves some, leaves us with good good tools to, you know, continue to develop our minds and, and to be, you know, silent assassins on the field, as mm -hmm. I like to say. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, like you said, it starts and ends with you. Uh, but we also got to understand the elephant in the room is – there's still an enemy out, enemy out yes. there um, yes. at, at the end of the day, too. So, man, that was good. Yes. And look, it, it's a new coaching staff. It's a new system. You know, Kyler Murray, for example, mm -hmm. right? He's only has three games under his belt of full-speed football running this system. It's very different, including the footwork. And, and he was talking this week just about some of the growing pains, learning like you were talking yeah. about, Keytrell. Here's Kyler. We got to break old habits. We have to, you know, we're learning as the weeks go on, trying to execute at the highest level as we possibly can. And I think that's part of being in a, you know, a new system. I haven't been in very many new systems, but, you know, being in this one, I don't think that we're, you know, we've reached our maximum level of, you know, what we're going to be eventually. How do you think the team has responded this week? Man, this week, I feel like we have came ready to play. Um, I feel like we, we had a showing that we weren't so proud of uh, last week and, it left a, a bad taste in our mouths. So I think this week, man, I think everybody is coming to play. We're competing, uh, understanding that we're not looking we're, – we're present right now where our feet are, and we're not worried about bye weeks or whatever else is to come. We got to focus on right now. If you think about this, if you think about what win really stands for, it stands for what's important now, and that's what guys are really taking to right now. What's, been, that, what's it been like to practice against Tyler for more than a month now? You know quarterbacks. <laughs> What's it been like? Hey, Kyler is a, is a special athlete. Um, to be able to go out there and do what he does, and especially come back from an injury like he did, um, I, had a, I had a similar injury um, as well. So I, I know what it took to, to go through to get to where he is now, man. So um, he's a special athlete. Like he said, man, we got more heights to reach, um, and, the, and the ceiling is forever high. It was his junior year. You were having a heck of a year, and you had the knee injury. Yep. What, eight games in? We'll yep. get into that in detail. <laughs> we'll talk about what brought you to Arizona. By the way, you can hear from Jonathan Gannon every uh, week. Cardinals in focus included. That's Sunday, 9.30 a.m., 12 news. We'll get you ready for this week's matchup. Cardinals at the Steelers. As we continue, Keytrell Clark, our special guest on the Big Red Rage, live from Trophy and Chandler, located on Queen Creek Road between Price and Dobson. Dotson is there, made the catch at the 40, tackled immediately by Keetrell Clark, who has held his own in his NFL debut. Deep ball, left side, single coverage, receiver there, and it's knocked away at the last second by Keetrell Clark, incomplete. Keetrell Clark just kept running in his face. Jones keeping it, only got maybe a yard as he's planted by Keetrell Clark. We saw him break up the pass, now he breaks up Daniel Jones. I promise you right now, Daniel Jones, 
He's got a mouthful of dirt. And the pass is caught, but out of bounds is Cooks. Incomplete. Could not get both feet down. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Keytrell Clark. He did a great job turning around. Pass left side. Skorana caught it, but he's dropped immediately. Keytrell Clark with a nice hit. Clark, we haven't seen him a lot, but he's back in the starting lineup today. And Clark with a great play to force a punt. And that's not an easy tackle. Ben Skronik, guy who plays fullback as well. Yeah. As a receiver. Yeah. I mean, he's a physical dude. Nine tackles, a team high total. And we're going to get to know Keytrell Clark here momentarily as we continue with the Big Red Rage presented by Santan Ford in Gilbert. But a great crowd here at Trophy and Chandler. Let's hear it, everyone. We're out on Queen Creek Road between Price and Dobson. And in particular, how about a Red Sea shout out to the Arizona Cardinals 2023 Fan of the Year, Tailgate Troy, who's sitting right <laughs> over there. Let me tell you, with a, name, with a name like Tailgate Troy, Wolf's going to stop by and grab a plate. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, oh, and you're getting a, a thumbs up. <laughs> that's good. Tailgate Troy, the Cardinals Fan of the Year, that's outstanding, no doubt about that. So I think it was by the end of rookie minicamp, Keytrell, and we heard from Michael Wilson, who who was, who was turning a my few boy. heads, right? Yeah, turning my, a few heads. That's and my he, guy, man. He gave you props. Yeah. He kind of introduced you to the media. <laughs> and he said, you know, there's this Keytrell Clark teammate of mine, and yeah. he already has a notebook on me. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about your notebook, and, and, and was that just sort of, a, sort of an introductory thing, or is that something you're continuing now and plan to continue? Yeah. No, that's, that's something that I, I do – Always, I take notes on everything. I even have, uh, I have a whole notebook full of like, I still have my notebook as far as my college notebook, but I took notes on every wide receiver before the season even started. So, like, wow, <laughs> wow, like, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I do. Um, when I was going against Mike, I felt like he was getting me a little bit more than I liked. So I was like, man, I'm about to watch some film on this boy. I went back and watched his college highlights, like. I know we in practice, but you're not about to catch the ball on me too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so cool. You did a little personal research right of, there, of right? Course. Okay, I, good. I did it on uh, all of our wide receivers as well. Keytrell, what do you think is your strength as a corner right now? I know you're a rookie and you're still yep. making your way, but what do you think right now is your strength? I say I feel like the physical attributes are there. Um, without the physical attributes, you know, I wouldn't be here. Uh I feel like mentally right now, that's my strength, uh, being able to respond. Uh, in the game, things are always going to go the way that you want them to go. Uh, sometimes you got you to gotta flush things when some bad things happen. Uh, so I say, say my, my strong point right now is just the mental part of the game, being able to uh, bounce back when things go wrong. Sort of reminds me of playing tackle, like a longtime host of this show, DJ Humphreys, right? And yep. DJ used to like to say, there'd be 60 snaps in a game, and I could be kicking my guy's butt for 59 of them, but he beats me on one, Man. just one, and he gets to the quarterback, and that can change the game. Yeah. And you're nodding because you know that's life as yeah. a corner, right? Yeah. So yeah. mentally, how long did it take you to get that strength? Because, I mean, look at your season, right? You started the first four games. Yeah. You played a lot of snaps in weeks five and six. Yep. And then you got zero defensive snaps the next five games. Yep. Yet you rebounded to start again last week, yep. and you led the team in tackles. Yeah, is that all part of that mental strength? Maybe <laughs> you formulated and forged as a corner. Absolutely. Um, I, I'll tell you one thing: if I didn't have the mental strength um, to endure all of the adversity that I went through, as far especially as far as being out for five games and being benched, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have played last week. Um, you know, I had to just continue to be me um, and show the character that I know I have uh, at the end of the day, knowing that in this game, it's a production-based business. Um, if you're not producing, then, you know, they're going to find somebody that's that's going to produce a little bit more, man. So I had to really take the emotions out of it and really, like I said before, look myself in the mirror. That mental. Yeah, no, <laughs> Keytrell, I, I've got to ask you this right here um, because I heard you earlier talking about this yeah. and you said it was the best thing that could happen yeah, to you. Yeah, I did. Now, Keytrell, <laughs> what, please, how, what do you mean by that? It yeah. was the best thing to happen to you. Yeah. Why? Uh, man, because if you break it down to say, say a guy has came into the NFL and he's never hit that wall, uh, never hit a time where, you know, he got benched or he's always been high. That moment where he gets benched or some things may not go his way, he might not respond the way that, 
you would think he would be able to respond, right? Yes. But being that I was able to go through that now in my rookie year um, and bounce back from it, um, I feel like that shows a lot about my character. Yeah, um, it does. And I just think that it was the best thing that happened for me because I grew as a person as well more than just a football player. Wow, dude. You know. We're going to hear from Nick Rollis here in a moment, your defensive coordinator. Was there something you needed to show Rollis and or Jonathan Gannon before you got back in the lineup? Um, for them, um, I don't, I'm not sure what else they needed to see, but I know for me I needed to show consistency because I wasn't consistent enough for my liking. So, And I know if I'm consistent enough for me, then that would be consistent enough for them. All right. Well, here's your D coordinator, Nick Rollis, and your performance against the Rams last Sunday. Oh, it popped off the tape is he tackled really well. That's not something you always are looking for with corner play, but it just so happened a lot of a lot of balls went to the flat on him or he had a screen his way and he tackled extremely well. Uh, I thought his off technique was good. You know, he was he was sticky on some cut splits where they're trying to get you off and um, get some access. And I thought he was in and out of his breaks really well. So he had a good game and you saw it, you know, no surprise because he was showing that stuff, you know, throughout practice leading up to that point. Now, when we were at your locker yesterday, a whole scrum of media, did I hear you say that you went back and studied a lot of your coverages and a lot of other things, sort of like what you did in rookie minicamp against yeah. Michael Wilson? Did you go back during the five games you weren't playing and study earlier in the season? Absolutely. Um, I feel like if you are a player in this league, <laughs> you have to study yourself as well mm. because your opponent is studying you. There's no reason why I should study uh, a guy and stay, put all this time into studying someone else and don't study myself. Uh, I be I have to be able to uh, sharpen my tools as well um, so I can be my best self on the field. Things that I may not – may things that I thought were a weakness or, or a strength may have been a weakness. So now if I'm looking back at the film and a guy may think he has a one-up on me and I look back and I'm like, hmm, oh, okay. Nah, you're not going to beat me at that because I corrected it because I watched myself on tape and watched the things that I did wrong and correct them so, you know, I won't do it again. So, Keitra, you're telling me you're – it sounds like you're your harshest critic. You look at yourself <laughs> and you break it down, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That, that, is, that is huge right there. <laughs> Keitra, seriously, if you do that, you're going to play 12, 14 years in this league Man. if you keep that mindset of constantly trying to get better yeah. and then looking at yourself first and saying, where can I get better? Yep. Look, I played 10 years in the NFL. I shouldn't have been there 10 days, but I played <laughs> there 10, 10 years in the NFL. I can't tell you how many guys that I played with who they would not look at themselves. Yeah. They would not do that. Yeah. They, they didn't want to. They wanted to look at their strengths, but not their weaknesses, where yeah. they need to get better. To, to listen to you talk <laughs> so openly about this process <laughs> Yeah. Buddy, if you mean that, you're going to play 12 years in this league. Man, thank you, man. I I just – it's all a mindset, as I, I was telling you before. It comes from just gaining wisdom from, you know, father figures that have came into my yeah. life. Um, and I thank them for that That's as well awesome. because, you know, it, it's not a lot of guys – and I am and I see, you know, it's not a lot, a lot of guys that kind of have that mindset and think the way I do, not trying to sound cocky, just being very confident – um, so, man, I, I see it all the time. I see guys that, you know, try to put the blame on other people instead of really looking themselves in the mirror and seeing, okay, they may have an assessment on me, but let me assess myself real quick. Yeah. And let's see if what they're saying adds up. If it adds up, then, hey, if it doesn't, then keep being you. Me, myself, and Me, I. myself, Just and I, bro. Come on now. Everything within, you're right. Yes, sir. Well, look, Keetra <laughs> Clark, round six rookie, is our guest here on the Big Red Rage, presented by Santan, Ford, and Gilbert. Yet there you were just beyond halfway point of your junior year at Louisville, right? You were bidding to be all ACC again. In fact, you were, but then down you went with a knee injury during one of your best games. At that moment, how scared were you? You wouldn't have an NFL future. Man. Uh, a lot flashed before my eyes when I got injured um, on that day. Uh, I, I'll say that was another piece of my life that really was uh, – that I had to be resilient in um, and, and face some adversity. Uh, I feel like I've been facing adversity all my life. So, uh, man, I just, I just knew that I had to keep on working. Um, I knew it wasn't over. I had teammates that had the same exact injury that I had, and I see them flourishing. So I, I didn't bat an eye. 
Um, I knew that the, the journey would be a little bit longer to get to the destination that I wanted to get to, but I knew I was going to get there, and, and I'm here. Okay, speaking of here, Midlothian, Virginia? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah, that's, that's exactly Midlothian, how you say it. <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Man, it sounds so medieval. <laughs> Midlothian. How cool is that, Paul? Well, I, I knew you would be attracted to that. It's outside Richmond, right? <laughs> Most of us would just say Richmond, but not Wolf, because he reads 14. He reads 14th century literature. Okay, oh my so he's goodness. attracted to the medieval aspect of it. What's What's crazy is not only were you an All-State DB, but you were All-State punt returner. And did I see here Max Preps had you rated as the number two punt returner in the country? Athlete. <laughs> <laughs> so do you ever have your eyes on maybe returning a punt or two in the NFL? What, what are you thinking there? Man, I wanted to return punts in college. I just never got my opportunity to. Uh, but, man, you know, I'm a ball player. Whatever my number is called to do, I'm, an, I'm there to do it. <laughs> yeah, can I ask you about Midlothian? What, yep. what is that like? Like, yeah. what, what is it, you know, how many people? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just want to get a feel for this so town. It's, so it's, it's so cool. So I know it's Virginia, but I'm not in the country part of Virginia. It's more, it's more county, city-like a little okay. bit. So it's not, it's not like we only have 600 people in the. Like, yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's, so it's, it's not a small town. No, nah, it's not a small no. town at all, man. It's, a, it's, it's quite big. Uh, my high school was, was very big as well. I had a big high school class. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a great area. Um, to, to be in. Cool. Nothing crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys were class six state champs, I see here. Yep. So, you know, it's not like uh, Zayvon Collins who went you know, in here telling Wolf about his uh, one stoplight town in Oklahoma. <laughs> okay, it's not like that. And Denny Hamlin is a famous and notable alum from uh, class of 99 at your high school. Are, are, are you a NASCAR guy being from that part of the country? Man, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Good. That's good. That's okay, good. how about this though right here? Um, speaking of, you know, acquaintances and things of that nature, who's your best friend on the team? Do you got a best friend on the team? You got somebody you hang with a little bit. So I'm, all me and the guys are tight, yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, but one guy that, that, that I've talked to and we had some deep conversations and uh, just, just talking life outside of ball as well is, is Garrett. Um, oh, that makes a lot of <laughs> sense, right? Yep. Yeah, so so me and Garrett, man, we, we're pretty tight. Uh, it's, it's a real relationship, man. And, you know, he was my guy that I sat next to on the plane for the away games. And when he came back on his debut and I was sitting next to him knowing that I was going to be an actor for the game, but I never – I always supported my boy and was there. And he always supported me as well and, you know, just continue to feed that good energy into me and just let me know, like, bro, it's, it's not over, bro. Keep fighting. And – uh, man, so yeah, I love geez. that yep. man. That makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy. And crazy story, um, crazy story, man. Me and G. Uh, so I have a homeboy that goes to Ohio State now, and he played at Syracuse with G. Uh, he called me and said, "Man, I got a homeboy towards ACL. Uh, he wanted to talk to you." And I was like, "Cool, send him my number." It was Garrett. And this was before we got drafted, and now wow. we're here together. So. Man, that, wow. that is that is. <laughs> Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. Yeah, yep. That, that, that's predestined right there. That's amazing. Hey, single game tickets on sale now. Go to acardinals.com slash buy tickets to secure your seats today. I'll tell you, when we come back, we'll talk about some of these rookie duties maybe. I mean, it's week 13. Are you still doing the rookie duties? That's one question I'm going to ask when we come back. <laughs> you know, I mean, guys like Wolf used to task all the rookies to get them donuts oh, and stuff Stop. like that. Come on now. We're live from Trophy and Chandler located on Queen Creek Road between Price and Dobson. The Big Red Rage with Key Trout Clark all presented by Santan Ford and Gilbert. Buda Baker. Somebody better get a hat on Buda Baker. Buda Baker's a bad... Who the Baker bad, man? Who the Baker's a badass dude? Watch him. That's him running and hitting everything. I've told Buda Baker more than once he needs to make that Mike Tomlin comment about him, his ringtone. I mean, that, <laughs> that's like the ultimate praise right there. You got Bad. a future Hall of Fame head coach, Mike Tomlin, raving about you. Man mic'd up on NFL films while he's watching you play over the course of a game. That is uh, that is the highest praise of them all. Hey, it's the Big Red Rage. Key Trell Clark is our guest here at Trophy and Chandler, located on Queen Creek Road between Price and Dobson. The Big Red Rage, presented by Santan Ford and Gilbert. We are Santan Ford. You tell us. what Starling Thomas, another yep. rookie corner, a couple weeks ago, just happened to be chopping up with him a little bit in the locker room, and, and he said, when in doubt, he looks at Buddha." that he really follows Buddha's lead. How about you? Yeah, I'm the same way, bro. Uh, 
Man, so growing up, you know, when I really started looking at the league, man, and really paying attention to more and more, uh, Buddha was my favorite player. Um, you know, I can I can vividly think about a time uh, last year we were playing Clemson and I was in my locker um, with a towel over my head <laughs> watching his highlights, bro. <laughs> like, wow. it, it's crazy. So I was literally watching his highlights like, I went back to college. I watched his highlights when he was over there in Washington. So I'm watching his college highlights. I'm like getting ready for the game. I'm getting pipe, uh, hyped, up, hyped up for the game, man. And it's just amazing to just be playing with him now. Like, you know what's incredible? <laughs> what's incredible about Buda Baker is the impact he has on everyone else around him. Yep. Offensively, yep. defensively, in transition with special teams. I don't care where it is right now. Buda Baker, when you watch Buda Baker play, Paulie, the, the most incredible thing about it is his fearlessness and, and the intensity in which he plays. Play after play after play yep. after play. Yep. He immediately challenges you as a man. Yeah. I don't care if you're offense, mm -hmm. defense, specialty. I don't care what you are. He challenges yep. you just by watching him mm -hmm. play how hard he plays. Yep. And with the intensity that he plays, he challenges everybody on the sideline to do the exact same without saying a word. And exactly. I, don't know, I don't know if you could have a better example than Buda Baker because of that. Man, man. So what was it like when you're in the same meeting room with <laughs> Buda Baker? Because Paris Johnson Jr. shared a little story about, you know, he, he sort of was uh, taken aback by Kyler Murray. You know, he's like, okay, act cool, act cool, Paris. <laughs> he's like telling himself, you know, don't be a fanboy. There's <laughs> Kyler Murray, that kind of thing. Was, there, was it a process for you to sort of be his teammate? Uh, man, see, I speak my mind, man. And I, I feel like at the end of the day, we're teammates now. So I can tell you how I feel. When I first met him, I said, bro, like, I really respect you as a player. Um, and a person as well, bro. Um, you a guy that I really looked at. Um, and I literally, like you said, like, I'm not trying to be a fanboy. That's what I told him. Like, bro, I'm not trying to be a fanboy, bro. Like, I appreciate your work. Um, all the work that you put in, um, you make me want to go hard as well. Uh, so, Well, guess what? Earlier today, Buddha Baker was asked about you and your return to the starting lineup. Here's Buddha. He continued to stay in it, continue to work very hard. Um, all the scout team reps, he was continuing to work his technique, continuing to work the communication aspect of it as well. And, you know, he came in and, you know, it's just like he was earlier on when he was starting. And now he's, he's just adding more uh, knowledge onto the game now that he's playing. So to get these reps and to get this uh, time on the field is definitely good for younger players, especially corners on the outside. Back to your point earlier, Wolf. When we watched the first couple games of the Cardinals in 2023, yeah. one of the things a lot of guys cited, guys like you and Kyle Vandenbosch, Rob Fredrickson, said, you know what, no longer is there such a vast difference between Buddha and the rest of the players on film. Last year, too often, right. there was Buddha playing at one speed and the rest of the defense at another speed. But now yes. everyone's playing up to Buddha's intensity Got and to. urgency. Right? And that, that has to be compelling when he's setting that standard. I mean, guys yeah. have to match that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. For myself, I'm I'm not the biggest guy. Um, every time we step on the field, I'm probably the smartest guy on the field. Uh, but my goal is not to play like that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I gotta. I see Buddha getting to the ball, running full speed, like he don't care about his life. But <laughs> 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 he does. It's like they used to say he was running into the darkness. I mean, true. Can you imagine yeah. that? <laughs> but nah, like bro, I I take heed to that man. So you know, that was kind of my mindset last game. Like bro, like forget it. Full speed. I don't care that he's bigger than me. I'm going to run full, in, full speed into him. <laughs> if I get him down, I get him down. If I don't, I know my team is coming. So. So, once again, and that's the reason why <laughs> Buda Baker and yeah. players like him challenge everybody on yeah. the sideline because football, for the most part, the, it's played by big, fast individuals who will just knock your face off, period. I, I, I realize when you get into the secondary, when you get into corner position, they're going to get smaller, and they need to get smaller because you need speed out there as well. But Buda Baker, when, when people watch him, is small. He's not a prototype safety by any stretch of the imagination, not even close. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the biggest guy, and he's not the strongest guy in the field. He's not. He's just the best player on the field. 
every time he steps in between those white lines because of how he plays. It's a mindset. Man, it is a mindset, Keytra. Why do you say that, though? <laughs> because you know that, don't yeah. you? Yeah, it's a mindset. Uh, whoever you tell yourself you're going to be, that's who you're going to be. Um, you tell yourself you're going to be great, you're going to be great. If you tell yourself that I'm going to go out here on the field today and I'm going to be the best player on the field regardless – if there is a Hall of Fa future Hall of Famer on the field, I'm going to be the best player on this field today, then you will be. But if you have any ounce of doubt that you're, gonna, that you're not going to do that, then you won't be. So you had nine tackles in this last game. You had ten tackles, two passes, defense against Dallas. Who's the best player you've gone against so far in a game? <laughs> who's, who's a guy? Just the dude factor. Like, okay, this, this guy is a dude. Uh... I'm going to take it all the way back to preseason. I'm going to go to Patrick Mahomes. Like, I, I'm not even talking about wide receivers. I'm just I'm just talking about quarterbacks, you know, at the, just a player. At, uh, and, and because, man, when I was playing against him, he would make things happen with his legs, like make plays happen with his legs. Uh, as a DB, it's hard to cover for longer than three seconds. Like, he makes the play last for 10 seconds uh, just running around. So uh, that was a guy that I went against that I that, that was very good for. It's a good answer. A good yes. answer. No <laughs> doubt about it. Hey, Cardinals game plan Friday, 6.30 on 12 News. We'll get you ready for the game. In fact, speaking of mindset, let's talk about James Conner when we come back with Keytrell Clark on the Big Red Rage presented by Santan Ford in Gilbert. This is a James Conner four-yard touchdown run. Just do flat shovel, flat face as Jack Nicholson. <laughs> flat shovel, flat face. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you run the ball inside the red zone. A little goal to go. Hand it off to James Conner. Let him find the light. And that's what he did. Here's James Conner. Whoa. Uh, flat, sho <laughs> flat shovel, flat face. <laughs> that's how you run the ball inside the red zone, Sonny. <laughs> I don't know how, if you're familiar with Frank Caliendo. Oh He's a nationally goodness. known comedian and impressionist. He lives here locally. He joined oh, really? Dave Pash on his Pash podcast, yeah. okay? That's in our own radio <laughs> studio, <laughs> Cardinals HQ. And That's hilarious. He is amazing. Man of a million voices, ridiculous talent. Yeah. And uh, it is a great listen, episode 69 of the Dave Pash podcast, wherever you hear <laughs> podcasts on Twitter, at Pash Pod. As Keytrell Clark is our special guest here, live from Trophy and Chandler, located on Queen Creek Road between Price and Dobson. It is the Big Red Ray. Presented by Santan Ford and Gilbert. Forget the whole Seahawks game that's up here right now. We're the original Thursday night football. That's how we <laughs> build ourselves around here. Okay, Drill. So tell us about James Conner. You talk about tough tackles. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know if there were, were there any scrimmages that were live or anything like that. Have you actually had to square up number six? Man, I told him uh, probably about two weeks ago. Uh, you know, me and I was about to go for the tackle. And we can't tackle in practice, obviously, but I was about to tag him off. And as I'm running to tag him off, I feel a big gust of wind go past me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, my goodness, boy. You, I had told him, I said, bro, I felt a big gust of wind when you ran past. He just started laughing. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's been on this show more than once, right? And, yeah. and he's told us how he originally went to Pitt, University of Pittsburgh, yep. as a defensive end. He was in the same position room with Aaron Donald. There was a bowl game where he split a wow. sack as a freshman with Aaron Donald, and then all of a sudden he was a full-time running back. Wow. So how do you know you're in the NFL when a former D lineman is now a starting Pro Bowl running back? Right? Oh, that's I, just crazy. I never knew that. That was yeah. that's news to me. I didn't know that. You guys are well aware that he's going back to Pittsburgh. Yep. Yes. Right? Hometown. Homecoming for him. Yep, homecoming. Uh, how much do you guys feed off? Because a lot of times when he trucks someone, I see the defense <laughs> jump up. Does that get you guys going? Absolutely, man. JC, he's gonna express his emotions on the field by any means necessary. He, it could be, we could be at ball at midfield, and he just got a first down. He's gonna hold. If he trucks somebody and got the first down, he's gonna get up, celebrate, and the whole everybody better wait for him to get back to the huddle. You, you know, there's no doubt about it, man. I mean, this is what James Conner brings, yep. and he's got to get the ball. He's got to get the touches. Great you, energy. You, you got to break. You got to hand the ball off and let him attack yep. the line of scrimmage. I don't want to go with the whole under center thing and everything else. Everyone knows how I feel about <laughs> that, Paulie. I don't want to talk about it. Thank you again. 
for me, James Conner needs to get a run at the line of scrimmage and let yeah. 232 pounds roll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? It's interesting, though, because when you flip it over, too, you look at the Steelers. They've got a couple of really they tough don't. tackles as well when you're talking about tackling a guy like Jalen Warren mm -hmm. or – Tackling uh, a guy, Najee Harris, Najee Harris, yep. 6'1", 242 pounds. Yep. They got a couple of tough tackles, they do, do they not? They do. They do have some some guys that's elite over there, man. And the main thing for us is just, for me at least, is being a fundamental tackler. Um, you can't run with any without any legs. That's what people, my coach used to tell me all the time. And you're not afraid. <laughs> nah. You'll stick it right into the fan. Man. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really afraid at all uh, by any means, bro. Look, I'm, I'm not going to get everybody – I don't want to get everybody yeah. motivated to play a game right now, but that's how I'm feeling. Sunday is getting closer. You're getting a little – yeah, the yeah, intensity, I might, the I might juice get, starts to get flow. a little riled up right now. I might <laughs> – Well, you go into Pittsburgh cuddling. to play the black and gold, it's going to be a black and blue game. There's no doubt about it. Yep. James Conner knows it. Uh, you know, look, he didn't even play a home game, high school, college, and pros, until outside Pennsylvania until he signed with the Cardinals. Stunning. Think about that. Yeah. And he's going back home, and uh, he this week he, he told the media just expressed his gratitude to the city of Pittsburgh and the Steelers for just what they afforded him. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of love there in the city. You know, I got a lot of respect for, for the people there and uh, just love for them, you know, taking a chance. I'm going to take an opportunity, you know, when it's coming out. You know, I was dealing with all types of injuries and cancer and everything, and the Steelers still, you know, selected me. And so, um, you know, I'm forever grateful for that. Um, and then I was at the University of Pittsburgh. You know, it's one of my one of the few schools that gave me a scholarship. So um, I got nothing but love and the people. Yeah, it's all love there. Think about it. He beat cancer. They found yes. tumors around his heart. He yes. endured 12 rounds of chemo, came back. The Steelers saw all that because they share the same facility, Pitt and the Steelers. So they saw that firsthand, what he was made of, yeah. how he came back, and what sort of player in person he is. Yeah, and as you know, Paulie, my older brother Craig, of course, is the radio analyst for the Pittsburgh Steelers and knows James very, very well. One of his favorite players of all time. Craig's been doing that for, what, 23 years? Somewhere in there, 23, 24 years. His favorite player, one of his favorite players of all time is James Conner yeah. because of who he is as a person. And I'm guessing top five also would be T.J. Watt, who's going to be a Hall of Famer, and he's tied for the league lead in sacks right now. And James Conner was asked, okay, uh, what does the Cardinals offense do? What's the key to getting past a T.J. Watt when you're running the ball? Run fast. <laughs> <laughs> now, T.J.'s a machine. Um, now, he's going to make plays for sure. You know, he's unstoppable. He's one of the best in the game right now. So, yeah, got our hands full with him for sure. And look, it's a very stout defense. They're in the number five scoring defense. So, you know, they're not going to give up a lot of points. They typically don't, which falls back to your defense. Right, Keytrail? You guys got to bring it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the key for this week, like I told you, man, is we didn't bat an eye. Uh, at the end of the day, we didn't come up victorious last week. But this week, we've been grinding very hard. Um, to make sure that we're limiting those explosive plays, that we're not allowing up, uh, giving up more, giving up more points than we want to give up. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to give up anything, obviously, but you know it's the NFL, so we just got to play our game, man, and just go out there and just play ball, have fun, um, and execute. Um, you know, obviously everybody knows we got a lot of rookies that's going to be on the field as well. So, um, man, just from us, we just got to play um, at a high level as well. You know, it should be no drop off. Yeah, yeah, George Pickens, what do you see from him on film? George Pickens? <laughs> um, George Pickens, man, he's a he's a good wide receiver. I feel like, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he's going to give us some good work. Uh, I'm going to be able to better my craft. It's going to be more of an iron sharpens iron type of thing. Okay. Press cover? Do you want press coverage on that? You want press? You want off? <laughs> you want a little zone? What do you want? Oh, you're trying to get to the nitty gritty. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I, I yeah. notice a pattern. I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't tell you the game plan. The Just know he's going to be covered. Just know he's gonna be covered. I the, love the, it, The bro. media was hitting you up at your locker yesterday, too, about Deontay Johnson. <sighs> all that. Like you, yeah. You, yeah you, you, all of a sudden, you went silent. You're not one to, to mince words, but all of a sudden, yeah. you, you, know, you I'm choose. just more so when it comes to my opponent, <laughs> I, just, I just like to – I love it. Yeah, y'all going to see when Sunday gets here. I don't like to talk too much. A little. Right. I love it. <laughs> now, what about Kenny Pickett? Uh, he can extend plays. You guys got to yeah. worry about his legs, too, a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, no. Nah. I played uh, I played Kenny Pickett when I was at Louisville, and he was at Pitt. And, um, so I've, I got the experience playing him once. Um, obviously, he's a, he's a little bit of a different player now. He's he's gained more knowledge, of course, um, since being in the NFL, man. So he's a, he's a pretty good player, man. We just got to come ready to play. And you know what, Paulie, honestly, I just want to 
I'll say this quickly. James Conner, and we're talking about James Conner. I'd love to see James Conner get the ball 25 times in this game. Seriously. Hey. Line up and hand the ball off and let him go to work on this because the one thing that cannot happen is that this offense, the Cardinals offense, is one dimension. You can't do that. Not against this defense with their pass defense. It's too good. Well, based on what he told us on his TV show this week, it's not going to happen again. Just six carries for James Conner. He will be featured. Put it that way. Hey, everyone, how about a special thanks? Keytrell Clark. Outstanding. Outstanding. Edition of the Big Red Rage presented by Santa and Ford in Gilbert. Special thanks, as always, Jim Almondro, Cody Fincher, Matt Lazarus, Walt Ellis, Jason, uh, and Lawrence Ellis as well. For Keytrell Clark, once again, Ron Wolfway, I'm Paul Calvisi. Hope you enjoyed it, Keytrell. We'll see of you on course, Sunday in you. Pittsburgh, the yep. Big Red Range.